It's B day. That sounds wrong. How about D day for bucks, fallow bucks? We're with sporting shooter editor Dom Holtam early on the opening day of the season and we're feeling pretty punchy. Farmer Andy Crow has been feeding in herds of them for us for months. Well, that's not quite true, but his crops are certainly the reason they're here. And today we get a chance to move them on. I've always found this place better in the evenings, but I wasn't going to wash with him really. So here we are, half four, beautiful summer's morning. Um, I know his crow's not here himself, but uh, yeah, I hope he's enjoying his breakfast. Um, and we'll, we'll see what we can find. It's a fine morning to be out with rifle and sticks, but there is nothing showing apart from a few prints on the tracks and a few scars in the wheat left by deer and badgers. As we get to the woods, the deer suddenly materialise, and so does some cooler, breezier weather. But it explains why they're tucked in and not out and about like we'd hoped. Dom spots this young doe, but oh no, it's a case of dude looks like a lady. No real easy shot through the trees because of the overhanging branches and what have you. And no real easy way to get anywhere closer to him. So I think we'll leave him. Quite cold. Next we get a glimpse of a roebuck, but what's that noise? On a different day, he'd have suited us fine, but we're here for fallow, if we can find one that's not in drag. Even here, where it is quite short straw, if a deer's laying down, the chances of you actually getting to see it until you're on top of it are fairly slim. All you can do is kind of scan the top of the crop and keep an eye out for any handlebars that are poking out. That means every time you see a thistle, you have a heart attack. The next thistle Dom sees is actually a deer with his younger mate. They appear and disappear like Loch Ness monsters in the mist. There's no shot, so we need to work our way along the margin. I'll try and sneak around and see if I can get a better angle, get a little bit closer. All of a sudden, the handlebars disappear from view and Dom makes a move to get up the high seat. Incredibly, he manages it, and even more incredibly, so does David, giving them a great view of the fallow. Well, the top bit anyway. We know that's a walloping great fallow box, and we're now in the high seat by some miracle. And all you can see is the top inch or so of his antlers. So even in this short straw, where he's laid down, he's almost invisible. But the fog has lifted, or the mist has lifted now. And we're in a great, great position to get a shot, but... Dom hears a quad bike, which could be a game changer. It's the gamekeeper doing his rounds. The bucks fidget, but hold tight. After half an hour of enjoying our front row seats, Dom decides it's time to cut to the chase.
after. The younger buck is the first to stand. Oi! Then he stops the big buck in its tracks. The big buck is just 20 yards along the hedge line. The younger animal fell where it stood. Yes, we gave a bit of a whistle. And another whistle. And another whistle. And eventually the old boy decided to lumber up. And as he did, a young male got up with him. Um, so I took the youngster first. Always rather take the poor animals, as we were saying earlier. Um, but as we also said, you know, that, these guys have got their hands in the cookie jar. You can see the damage to the, the cornfield here. Um, you know, they've been out this crop for the last month, driving Andy mad. So I gave a bit of a shout to stop the, the bigger boy as he's leaving hey. the field. Um, and we managed to get, get him as well. He's just obviously, he's a bit adrenalised, so he's, he's just run to the edge of the wood and we've seen him drop in the fringes here, so. Brilliant, brilliant stalk this morning. Really enjoyed that, you know, the chance to get into the, into the crop. I didn't honestly think we were going to get a chance to get up the high seat and get the elevation we needed for a safe shot. So yeah, it worked out, worked out brilliantly. So pretty pleased about that. Hopefully Crow will be in work and then we can go and steal the Polaris to drag them back rather than having to haul them back to the car. So let's go down and see what we've got. Good buck. I say, be lovely to have left him till he's all cleaned off rather than still in velvet. But, um, you know, it's, it's one of those situations where you're here to do a job for the farmer and the landowner's been hit really hard by these deer. It's not a time to say, oh no, I'll leave him for another day because he'll look nice on the wall. We're here to, to cull the deer. But he's, uh, he's still a fine animal and he's been living well on all this, uh, and all this wheat. So, yeah, well, hopefully Andy will be pleased. Much younger buck. Still in excellent condition. Laid down with his mate. Bang to right. Mr. Crow soon arrives with the buggy and Dom relays our brilliant morning stalk. Crow is a happy man, although he looks grumpy. Maybe he's just not a morning person. Yeah, it's about a month too late, but yeah. yeah he, he, I don't know if you've been up the top of the field there. You ought to walk up there, you'll see the damage they've been doing about an acre up there that's completely gone and that's without all the patches in the next field down there's probably a couple of acres out there and it's the same old story to save crow's knee david does the honors and that viewers is the biggest day's <laughs> work right he's done in all his years on field how rude Back at the yard, there's the as yet unconsidered Olympic event of synchronised graniking. They really are fine animals, raised on Andy's best, and they've certainly given Dom a stalk to remember. <laughs> 